I've been daily driving a Mac for over 20 years, and every time I set up a new machine, there are a bunch of settings I have to turn on and a bunch that I have to turn off. Some are obvious and some are really not. I want to share with you my methods today so that you can make the Mac as best as it can possibly be. We're gonna start by disabling some of the settings because while most of the defaults are pretty good, there are a few that I don't love. And there's one in particular that makes my blood boil and it's so terrible that anytime I find a Mac with it on, I throw it across the room. It's in system preferences under keyboard, text, this motherfucker right here. Correct spelling automatically. This is a horrible, horrible thing because it is iOS autocorrect, but on the Mac. And unlike on a little tiny touchscreen keyboard where you're fat fingering stuff, you will not do that with a full-size keyboard. And if you do, well, there's a, there's a spell check. <laughs> this should not exist. It's terrible. It corrects a bunch of stuff that you don't want corrected. And it uses the same iOS, like the little tiny little blue X and you gotta go over with your mouse and click it. It's terrible, turn it off. There are a couple of other things associated with this that I also turn off, but you can leave them enabled, like capitalize words automatically and add a period with a double space. That one's helpful if you're like 500 and you learned how to type on a, a typewriter. I actually, I learned how to type not on a typewriter, but by a lady that was 500. She's probably not alive. Miss Atwood, I'm a fast typer. She taught me how to type good. Just Next up, extensions. More specifically, the share menu. If you're inside of the Apple ecosystem, the share sheet is fantastic, but this thing can get pretty messy pretty fast with a bunch of apps that you're probably not actually going to use. As you add third-party apps as well, these will be added into this menu and oftentimes they are enabled by default, resulting in a very cluttered share menu that when you go to use it, you're like, now where is that app? Where is it? Just disable all the stuff you don't use. When was the last time you used Apple Books? I didn't even know they still made that. <laughs> Turn that off, uh, news, all these ones that you're not going to choose to use, turn those off that, so that you can focus on the ones that you want to use when you're going to share something. Next up, Siri, the voice assistant that can do no wrong, or in some cases, most cases, do no right. Uh, a lot of people just choose to disable Siri altogether on their Mac, and, and that's understandable, but I think if you restrain it properly, it can be useful. The biggest annoyance with it is that it just talks back to you. Shut up, I don't want to hear you. Turning off voice back, uh, voice feedback disables it from replying to you audibly. So unless you have some uh, accessibility reason to leave it on, it's much handier because you're looking at the screen. It's not like it's across the room. You're staring at your Mac. And this will allow you to, well, just read its response instead of listen to its response. But sometimes you're in an environment where well, you don't want to talk to Siri at all. You wanna use Siri, but you don't wanna be in a cafe and say, hey, what's the weather? <laughs> so if you go into accessibility and then scroll down to Siri, there's actually something called enable type to Siri. Now, if I press the Siri icon, I can type a prompt. So I can say, what is weather? And I can misspell it and it still gives me the weather, which is really, really great. But I still have Hey Siri enabled so that when I say that, it shows up and there you go. It's gonna to respond to me in kind. Pretty handy indeed. Let's talk about the dock. The dock is often misunderstood by a lot of people, and I think that they're not utilizing it properly. First of all, get rid of all the applications that you don't use with frequency. There's a bunch of defaults on here that you just don't need. It should be the location where you have the applications that you're using with the most frequency and or other active applications. But there are some settings that I think you should change beyond that. If you go into dock and menu bar inside of the system preferences, there's a few in particular that I think should be changed absolutely. And the first one is the position on the screen. Do not put your dock at the bottom, and here's why. When the dock came out in the early 2000s, when Mac OS was new, displays were not widescreen. They were like four by three. They were almost square, and so you had a lot of vertical real estate. We don't have a lot of vertical real estate anymore, but most of the content that we do on a computer is, is vertical. And the reason that our displays are widescreen is for content viewing. And so you don't wanna lose the already very limited vertical space you have. And so I suggest putting the dock on the left or the right side of the screen so that it's out of your way and gives you more vertical real estate. I choose the left and you might be wondering, well, why? because isn't all of your content over there? And it is, and that's why I keep my dock over here. In Cyrillic languages, where you read left to right, having your dock on the left side of the screen is great, because that's where most of the action is. 
but you will notice that well, it's kind of in the way. And so I choose to automatically hide and show the dock. But my frustration with this has always been that it, it reveals itself way too slowly. There's a delay and then a slow animation. And so it just becomes inconvenient. I'm going to show you how to fix that later in this episode. But there's a couple other things that I also choose to change. The first one is minimization. By default, if I minimize a window, it does the genie effect where it kind of sucks it down into the dock. And this is cute, but it gets annoying after a while because if you have larger windows, it takes a lot of time to do this. Change this to the scale effect. It's not as sexy, but it just, it goes away very quickly. And that is something that I much prefer using. So get rid of that, scale effect is the way to go. And then the last thing that I would recommend changing as well, is getting rid of uh, recent applications in the dock. See, I'm, I, I'm gonna show you how to change this delay because it's already pissing me off. <laughs> You'll notice that all of my recent applications are opened. Um, that's a thing that was added semi-recently. I don't like it uh, because it makes my dock feel more cluttered. It adds crap in there that doesn't need to be there. Make your dock optimized. It's not supposed to be confusing and cluttered. It's supposed to be the workflow center. And so allow it to be that. Oh, one thing that I almost forgot about the dock, I have been leaving system preferences in the dock, which is something that I have never traditionally done. And there's a reason for me leaving it here. If you right click system preferences when it's closed, it shows you all of the categories in system preferences. And so I can just click network and it automatically opens the network pane without me having to go out and find the ridiculous you know, setting inside of five menu deep. It's just great. And boy, do I like it. The last setting that I recommend you disable, or at minimum change, is hot corners. Hot corners have been around forever, and more recently, Apple changed it to this quick note function within notes. It's dumb, it's slow, I don't like it. They just brought it to the Mac because it's on the iPad, and it's like, who, who wants that? Maybe you do, but you're wrong. So go into desktop and screensaver, then go to screensaver, then click hot corners. If this seems like a dumb place to put it, it's because you're right, it's very dumb. But this is where you can choose each corner's function. Again, I don't like quick note. I've always had this displayed the desktop because that's kind of like Windows where you drag your cursor down in the right corner and boom, everything gets out of the way so that you can see your desktop, you can interact with it, you can drag stuff, it's fantastic. And then when you wanna bring all your windows back, you just drag it to the outside, you click and boom, we're in business. Very, very handy. But there are hot corners for everything. You can launch mission control. You can uh, start and disable your screensaver. You can open Launchpad. That's the thing that no one uses with the, this. That I bet it's the first time you've ever used it before because it's dumb. Anyway, hot corners are fantastic and you should customize them to your liking. Now that we've got all the yucky stuff disabled we don't like, I'm going to enable a couple of settings. And spoiler alert, almost all of these are inside of the Mac OS Finder. But one of them is inside of System Preferences. And it is, well, it's the layout of this app. It's never made sense to me. This is organized apparently by category, of which there are two. And the categories make no sense. I don't understand how mission control and security and privacy are related. And then how, uh, you know, battery and startup disk are related. That doesn't make any sense to me. The categories are stupid. Now, you can access an alphabetical list through the view menu, just like you can inside of the dock. But you can also just organize the main menu alphabetically instead. Of course, you can rely on the search function, and that's something I often do. But if you've been using a Mac for a long time and you know where stuff is, it's nice to just look it up by alphabetization. Alphabetization. Yeah. And be able to find the thing you're looking for. Okay. Let's talk about Finder. Finder has been around for ages, and it has gotten over the years fairly complex, but they've also tried to simplify it. And in so doing, a lot of really great power features that you probably want are disabled by default. And let's turn those puppies back on. So we're first going to enter the Finder Preferences. And inside of Finder Preferences, you'll find this little window that is very tiny and looks quite old. And there are some things that I always turn on on every new Mac. The first one is that I choose to show the hard disk. I'm old school. I like having that on my desktop. And that's something that I, uh, well, I choose to enable. The other thing is when you open a new window, it always by default shows recents. And it looks okay right now, but as soon as I add more files to my file system, this just becomes a cluttered, ugly, confusing mess with crap you've downloaded and just photos, it's horrible. Okay. Okay, so I choose to change my new finder window to the desktop, but you can change it to any folder that you so choose. 
Once you've done that, uh, let's talk about the sidebar because the sidebar by default, I think is okay, not great. <laughs> if you go to sidebar, you can enable and disable anything you want in this menu. Again, I never use recents. I turn that off, I don't like it. But there are things like my home folder that I do want easily accessible. So turn all the stuff that you want available to show up. And if there's things you don't want showing up, like tags, for example, I never use tags, just get rid of them. And then once you've done that, you can go into your specific window and you can drag drag these in order to sort them. I always do this order. It doesn't really make sense necessarily, but that's the way I've always done it. And so that's the way I like it. So organize this in a way that makes sense to you. Once you've done that, head over to the advanced tab in Finder Preferences, and you will find a setting that is the best setting ever that I don't know why it's disabled, and that is show all file name extensions. Now, sometimes, like in this case, it shows you that it's an RTF, but there's a lot of file types, like for example, um, Affinity Photo and Adobe Photoshop PSD files. They never, like, there's nothing visual that notes that in the system, and so you're like, what is this? And you have to go into info, it's annoying. So just click show all file name extensions, and then hey, there you go, now we can see that it is .alfred preferences, .pdf, and then this one apparently never had .rtf available. So there we go, <laughs> that's a weird bug. This is a fantastic way to make things more visible. But that's just from a preferences standpoint. Let's talk about actually viewing and interacting with content. And the first place we're going to do that is the toolbar. If you go into view inside of the finder and click customize toolbar, you will find a bunch of stuff that's not in here by default and some of it for good reason. I mean, how often are you burning a CD, right? But there are a lot of things that you may want to add. And one that I think you must add because it is fantastic is AirDrop. If you add AirDrop in the menu, you'll see that, well, there's nothing that it does. It just is blank. But as soon as I select a file, any file, even just one, it becomes solid. And if I click that, then an iOS style AirDrop window pops up and I can share it. This is so much better. And if I select more files, there you go. It just sends all of them. This is way better than the default behavior of having to drag over to the AirDrop window, waiting for the device to show up. Hopefully it shows up. And then once it does, you, that, this, this sucks, okay? So just enable the AirDrop icon inside of your toolbar. It is fantastic. Definitely worth trying. And uh, you know, there's a bunch of others that you should maybe consider customizing as well. There's a lot of stuff in here. Okay, once you've done that, there are two very important settings as far as I'm concerned, and they're old school Mac OS settings, but they provide actually useful information in your file browser designed to browse files. And that is under view, show uh, path bar, and view, show status bar. The path bar will show you, and there is no path right here because we're in recents, but it'll show you the uh, hierarchy on your disk of where you're located. Now you can also right click the name up here and that will show you as well, but that's not quite as intuitive. This is a really good way to be able to jump forwards and backwards inside of your uh, file system with ease. And then the, the benefit about the status bar is, well, it should be obvious. It tells you how many items are in a folder. If you have items selected, what their size is and how much hard disk space is available. You also have the ability to, if I'm on an actual thing that has files in it, um, to increase and decrease the size of the icons, which is handy if you're in icon view. So this is list view. If I go to icons, there you go big and small. Let's talk about one last thing that, well, pretty much does a similar function, and that is pressing uh, Command J. This is also in the view menu as view options. If you look at this window, you'll go, wow, nobody has touched this in 20 years. And that's because they probably haven't. This has been in macOS forever. But it is a really good way because you can set settings per a folder. So I'm in downloads right now, and anything I change in here is relevant just to the downloads folder. So I can say, for example, always show this to me in a list view or in an icon view. Group them by kind in this specific folder, but not in other folders, or, or sort them by this, or make the icons larger over here. Um, or you can say, um, where is it? Uh, yeah, put the label off to the right side. That's one I do in a couple of folders. This is very handy. In fact, you can even go further than this, and this is one thing that is a a little weird, but once you get used to it, you might really like it. You can change the background of a window into a color or to a picture. Now you might be wondering, why on earth would I wanna make something lime green? And well, you don't. But you might wanna make it the very slightest tinted color because what I've done in the past is I'll tint things to a specific folder and then I instantly know where I am on my file system without having to look at desktop or whatever because I just know, oh, it's light blue, that's my desktop. Um, there is a lot of stuff in here that you can do that's pretty cool. Much of this is in pre-Mac OS X, it's been here forever, but the view options section is pretty darn cool. 
Now let's talk about some of the stuff to finish that you cannot do with regular settings that you need to run terminal commands for, like that dock. There are some handy ones. In order to run terminal commands, well, we need to open up the command line, which can be done by, well, finding terminal inside of Spotlight or opening the application from within the utilities folder inside of the applications folder. Spotlight's easier. Once you've got terminal open, well, basically all we're going to do is paste commands. All of these commands, as well as the commands to revert these settings, should you wish to do so, are found in the description below. But I also wanna just talk you through them because they're pretty simple if you read them out in plain and simple language. So we are going to write to com.apple.doc, which is the plist for the, 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 the preferences for our doc. And the values that we're going to change are the auto hide delay and the auto hide time modifier. They also have integer values. These do two things. The first one is uh, how long it takes for the dock to decide to start coming out. It's because if they, they don't want you to move your dock over here and for it to instantly appear. I think that that's what you should do and I'll show you in a second. But there's the delay and then there's also the time for the actual dock to appear, how long that animation takes, as well as kill all dock at the end, which, well, quits our dock and then restarts it without us needing to reboot the computer. If we run the command, you will find that the dock turns into a very useful, amazing thing, where as soon as I move my cursor over, the dock instantly appears, and as soon as I pull away, it instantly disappears. This is why I love having my dock on the left side of the screen. It is fast, it is there, and it makes hiding it not seem so slow. If you choose that this is, well, a little bit too fast for you, you can change these values. Change it from zero and zero to 0.5 or to 0.8. It's just the time in seconds before it decides to reveal itself. This is a very handy way to get your dock out much faster. And as far as I'm concerned, I really can't use a dock without it. Just try it for a week and you'll come back here and say, you are right, I'm sorry. Benjamin's shaking his head, but he's wrong because he hasn't tried it. But he'll come back in a week, just like you. I'll wait, see you in a week. Next up, doc spacers. I'm going to paste this command, press enter. You'll see the screen flash. And then when I drag my cursor over to the dock, you'll see the, what the heck? There's a hole in it. Well, that's a spacer. If you have a lot of stuff in your dock and or you wanna organize your dock by category, spacers are really handy because you can drag them and say, okay, everything up here, this is work stuff. And then I've got personal stuff below. And it just functions like any app icon would. If you press it, well, nothing happens because it's a spacer. If you decide you don't want it anymore, well, you just drag it off the dock like anything else. And well, you have to wait long enough. There we go. It says remove and now it's gone. That's pretty cool. That's a dock spacer. Who is the subservient one? You or the computer? Who's the boss? Right, so why do you let it boss you around? Anytime you're using external media and you remove it without ejecting it manually, it's like, eh, it wasn't ejected properly. Look. Mac OS is still a little brat about this. Windows doesn't care, Linux doesn't care, Mac OS does. And not only does it yell at you for doing it, but you physically manually have to dismiss these commands one by one. There's a lot of scenarios, especially where this is annoying. Like if you have media plugged into your display and your display goes to sleep and then the media unmounts and then you open up your computer and there's like 12 notifications about it. It's stupid, okay? And look, boomers. Technically, yeah, back in the day, this was a problem, but this is not 1984 anymore, it's 2022. And in 99.99999% of the instances, removing your media is not gonna be a problem. If something is mission critical, yes, eject it properly, but you shouldn't be yelled at if you don't because who freaking cares? So go into terminal, paste this command, enter your admin password, reboot your computer, and you're done. Mac OS will shut up and won't yell at you if you take stuff out, asterisk. There is one small disclaimer. There is a new macOS update that just came out literally the other day, macOS 12.4. Now on macOS 13, that is in beta right now, this command still works. But in macOS 12.4, it does not. I'm hoping that this is a bug and that it will come back. But if it doesn't come back, if this is the new future, there are third-party apps that are free that do this exact same thing. They just run in your menu bar instead. One of them is called Ejectify. If you go download that app, I've used it before. It works great. It sits up in your, in, in your menu bar and you can tell it, hey, whenever I get a notification about this, shut up and dismiss it automatically before I see it. It's a very handy thing. You should do it. Mac OS, stop being a little baby, okay?
I love screenshots in macOS. macOS is just fantastic about taking screenshots relative to Windows and other operating systems out there. It just works great. But here's the problem. It saves them by default in .png. These are very large, very uncompressed files. So I just took a screenshot of my desktop and it's 24 megabytes. There are not many websites, for example, that I could go to and upload this without running into issues. And .png in and of itself is not super widely supported. So there is a terminal command that I will show you and I'm just gonna type it out because it's so simple. Defaults, write com.apple.screencapture, type and check this out, dot JPG. If I type JPEG, bada boom, bada bing, I'm gonna take a full screenshot again and instead of being 24 megabytes, it is, uh, let's see, two. <laughs> JPEG is just a more widely accepted format. It's much better for web, which is typically where you're square, share, uh, sharing screenshots anyway. This is a great way to take screenshots in JPEG without having to convert them. Now, you can change this to anything you want. You could do TIFF, you could do GIF, you could do any type of format that you'd like. And it works great and it's fantastic, but JPEG is what I choose to use. So there you go. Let's talk about the last terminal tip of the day. And this is one that I also use a lot because I am a hider, not a shower. Not a shower, not a grower. I don't know what any of that means. Okay, when you go into the music application, there are a few ways you can get rid of it. You can close the window with Command W, which doesn't work because I have to start listening. Command W and the application stays running. You can push Command Q and the application quits altogether. You can push Command M and it uses that nice scale effect we used earlier to go back into the dock. Or you can use Command H. I use Command H all the time. It hides the application. It gets it out of the way. It doesn't put it in my dock, but it's still running. The problem with Command H is that, well, you kind of forget that that application is running. You don't know if the window's on a full screen window in another location or inside of another space if you use spaces or, and mission control. Uh, you don't know if it's uh, you know down here in the dock, if you've got a bunch of uh, application windows minimized, it's confusing. And so there is this fantastic command that I'm gonna push enter on and check this out. Now, when I hide the application, it just becomes transparent. And so you can look in an instant at your dock and see if an application is running with a window open, but is hiding. There you go. It's the way to do it. And uh, thank you for coming to my TED Talk. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a like. If you didn't, well, that other button doesn't do anything anyway, so knock yourself out. But most importantly, and as always, stay snazzy.